Studios here in beautiful Hamilton, New Jersey. Welcome to episode five of the Corman Fantasy Cast. Just getting through week three of the NFL season, about to embark on week four. Um, and here we have with us uh, our guest host for this week, uh, what the only three-time Corman League champion, a man who needs no introduction, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Holiday. Thank you for being here, Mike. Thank you very much. I'm a huge fan of the show. Glad to hear that. Um, we have so much to get to today. Uh, before we get into to anything, we, we like to give our uh, guest host a chance. Just uh, any any observations, any um, any things you want to bring up regarding the first three weeks or even last week uh, of the, the Corman Fantasy League. Well, I think everyone's doing their part so far this year. Um, everyone's uh, filling out complete rosters, you know, picking up guys in the, the waiver wires. So good job to everyone out there. Um, yeah, last week was a, a great week, especially for me. Um, what I did was ungodly to my brother Joe. Um, I beat him 165 to 110. Sucks for Joe. Second highest score of the week, but unfortunately you came across a juggernaut in myself and uh, got your ass beat, so sorry about that, buddy. Um, you know, you had Marvin Jones, uh, Jeremy Hill uh, put up close to 50 points for you, but with my team of uh, Winston, Hilton, David Johnson... Um, Kansas City's defense, 35 points. Thank you, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Oh. Brutal. Um, plenty of other games. Um, you know, Bombo Berry, uh, Pimp Squad. Uh, Berry lost 67 to 94. Um, you know, uh, Pimp Squad had no Travis Benjamin, zero points from him, but still put up a, a big day thanks to Terrell Pryor, who looks like a gem right now. We just had some breaking news. Ooh, Josh Gordon. Drug addict. Oh, what a shocker. Somebody cue the Amy Winehouse. <laughs> because Josh Gordon is going back to rehab. He is. He yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if this were a serious show, I would now say how uh, we're really concerned about Josh Gordon. But really, he's just a name and a roster spot as far as we're concerned. Sucks that he's going back to rehab, though, huh? And it sucks that he's on Pimp Squad's team, but yeah. because he has to prior... His value went straight up, so, yeah. you know, it looks yeah. good going forward. And listen, I, I just want to say, you brought up how everybody, all 14 uh, owners have been doing their part, have been filling out those lineups, really just staying diligent and trying to be as competitive as possible through the first uh, three weeks and going on four weeks. I just want to say, I know that a lot of people out there uh, are in multiple leagues, and that's understandable, right? But I, I take pride. I, you know, I'm, I'm only in one league. I only do one league, okay? And that's just me personally. I do the Corman. Um, but I, I gotta say, whenever somebody that I work with tells me about their league, I always secretly laugh at them inside my own head, and I think about how they think that their league actually fucking matters, no, you know, and the truth is, is that when you have people lighten up the message board like our owners do, when you have people talking shit back and forth to each other the way that they do, okay, when you have a fantasy cast specifically made for your Fantasy Football League. I mean, that is that is a league for legends. Oh. And that that's the kind of league, especially the fact that it's been going on almost a decade now. So, you know what? I, I'm just getting on my soapbox here, and I'm saying that I'm goddamn proud to be a part of this league. It's been built up over time to be a, an amazing league, highly competitive, um, and it, it's it's one of the highlights of my sports calendar year, is football season specifically for the Corman. Uh, 100% agree. All right, so uh, after all that... Um, let's get into last week's results. Uh, Mike, uh, why don't you go ahead and run through uh, our, our slate of games from last week. Okay. Well, I already two of them, so two's gone. Well, what a match number three. Uh, Beers versus Dak Attack. Uh, Dak Attack wins 108-71. Uh, Dak Attack had a great performance by his running backs, uh, Mark Ingram, and his newly acquired Todd Gurley. We'll get into that later, right? Yes, absolutely. We have a lot to talk about there. Also, he had 36 from Deshaun Jackson and Jarvis Landry. Um, uh, James Plunkett only got eight points from all three of his receivers. Uh, Brandon Cooks, Philip Dorsett, and Jeremy Macklin. Yeah, you know, it's, it's crazy. When you think about that game, for, for that Monday night game, for uh, the Saints to score 30-something and the Falcons to score 45, and yet when you looked at that final box score, Julio Jones and Brandon Cooks, Nothing. I think, were held to one reception each. I think you're right. I mean, that, that is the kind of st statistical anomaly you may never go through and see again. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, pretty pretty crazy um, in terms of that. It was a beat time regardless, though, so it didn't matter. Um, next matchup, how did I win last year? Our reigning champion, Chris, uh, defeated old dirty BJ, CJ, um, 104 to 83. 
Uh, Chris got 50 points from his uh, tag team of uh, Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson. Um, and also 23 from Christine Michael, who looks like moving forward is the guy in Seattle. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, for, uh, unquestionably. And, you know, for, for Chris, for how did I win last year, um, you know, good for him getting the win that he got this week because uh, you and I were talking before uh, during our, our uh, production meeting, we were talking about how um, his, his uh, week coming up now with Rodgers and uh, Jordy Nelson being on by and having the injuries that he's dealing with now, I mean, he is really a long shot to pick it up. So for him to get that win... You know, I mean, he would have been staring down the barrel of 0-4 if he didn't uh, get that win this past week. Exactly. And thankfully, uh, BJ didn't pick up uh, uh, to start Demarius Thomas or Eddie Lacy, or he would have won that matchup. So it's one of those things where you beat yourself, uh, CJ. Uh, yeah. Tough break loss. Um, we also got B for Boomer. Defeated Knuckles, 90-86. to wow. yeah. um, That was a tough one. You called him out last week. He stepped up. Uh, both of you. Oh, well, listen, he didn't so much step up as I stepped down. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. Um, uh, you know, both tight ends uh, put up goose eggs in a typical boomer fashion. Uh, he starts Delaney Walker, who everyone knew he was out. But having Gronkowski, you had to start him. He's your number one guy. He's in the lineup. He's active. Yeah. I mean, he's a blocker. What are yeah. you going to do? I mean, it happens. Yeah. Also, um, you know, I, I kind of gave up for the time being on John Brown. I, I wanted, mean, wanted to catch some of that. Eddie Royal magic. Yeah. <laughs> and Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Royal lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, didn't really work out too well for me. Uh, but really, it was a close enough game where, you know, I, I could have put one of several guys from my bench on there and I would have walked away with the victory. But, you know. I mean, you had Sproles in your bench, but how do you start that guy? Right. He, he hadn't done anything all year. So, in the end, what, what really could you do? Yeah, exactly. Uh, next match, high on AJ's green, Kevin Bailey uh, defeated Mohawk Maniacs 97 to 71. Mm. Another instance where poor team management. <clears throat> Wayne, what's going on, man? I mean, seriously, you started Watkins. Everyone knows that Watkins was hurt last week, and he's probably going to be hurt this week, too. So you can't start the guy unless you know for sure he's going to be in the lineup. Right. You know, it seems at this point, like Wayne is kind of playing this like the 600 pound man who Seriously. just has kind of given up on life and says you know what i, I hope not. I, I don't really have to get out of bed to live my life i can just use this bedpan listen he's a champion you know i know him and cj got into it this week in the message boards right right yes and and, and you know what i gotta say i understand that it's an elite fraternity of corman winners i understand that but to me honestly the lamest comeback to something is well i won the corman championship did you ever win it because the truth is, I, I mean, look, we're all proud of, you know, if you have, a, you know, three for you, you know, two for Chris, that's fine. But we're talking about what you did here and now, Wayne, okay? And I understand, like, you got to have some line of defense for the beating that you've been taking, both verbally and, you know, in the actual, on the field of play. But, uh, yeah, keep, keep all that, but I won once years back. That's, you know, save that. We don't need that. Mine were off for sure five years ago. <laughs> uh, last matchup of the week, uh, the closest matchup of the week, mm. Kickers Lives Matter. Bobby, again, remains undefeated, defeated Adrian Peterson 75 to 74. Um, somehow, some way, Bobby continues to do it. Uh, 3 and 0. Uh, he's talking shit. He had an, um, the backup running backs and D'Angelo Williams and Spencer Ware were the starters for three weeks, but now that they're back, um, I'd be a little nervous about Bobby, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and you know, the thing about Bobby is, you know, he won, and that's good because I think he's going to need that victory uh, in all the long run here. Yeah, all three of them, but this one especially, because um, if you looked at his scores the first couple of weeks, I mean, he was really putting up some nice points, and now he, he eked it out, but that score says it all. 75 yeah. points, I mean, look, you're going to score more than that in a lot of weeks, Bobby, but, you know, my, my prediction moving forward is there's not going to be a whole lot uh, higher than 75 points every week for you. You know, I mean, it's, it's going to get rough. It's going to get lean, especially when Jamal Charles comes back. Yeah, which is this week, I heard. Right, okay, so he is, yeah. yeah. There you go. Mm. So that's all the week one matches we have, or week three matches, I'm sorry. All right, so listen, we're going to be right back uh, after this uh, message from our sponsors. Corbin Fantasy Water. Not only is it a great water... But you can stick it in your pants. <laughs> you can stick it in your pants. Pretend you have a giant hog. You know, like at the club 
Or your kid's preschool. <laughs> Corn and fantasy water. <sighs> Pretend you have a big hog. Welcome back. You know, we like to pride ourselves in um, keeping up on the goings-on of the Corman League, keeping up on the, the big events that are happening week to week. And one of the biggest uh, trades, in, in recent memory at least for the Corman, took place last week. Um, it was uh, between T-Baggers, led by Mike, uh, and Dak Attack, led by De Silva. Uh, the pieces that were in play for this trade, Dak Attack trading away Stefan Diggs, David Johnson, and Jay Ajayi. And Mike trading away, the T-Baggers trading away, Deshaun Jackson, Todd Gurley, and Isaiah Crowell. I mean, we had, you know, huge pieces here. Two first-round picks, a couple of wide receiver one type guys, uh, for their teams anyway. So um, t tell me about this trade. Let's, let's talk about it a little bit. Well, you know... I traded with the Silva the only way you can trade with the Silva. You know, I rubbed his tummy a little bit. That's what you got to do. <laughs> All right. So the trade started the night before, actually, with Amari Cooper in the package instead of Deshaun Jackson. Um, I wasn't happy with that, but at the same time, I was uh, a little upset with Todd Gurley because he was putting up five, six points a week. He was killing me. And I was nervous. So the next day, I saw the Silva at um, his place of uh, business, uh, mm -hmm. Bruno's Pizza. Shout out to Bruno's Pizza, Very home nice. of the 24-inch pizza. Um, so I saw him at Bruno's, and I was like, Mike, I can't do Amari Cooper, but I'll give you T.Y. Hilton. Okay, done. Let's do it. He sends me the trade. I don't like that either. So later that night, he's desperate for a trade now. He's like, he's a trade monger. You have, to, you have to get him going, and once he has to have a trade in his head. He's like Riverboat Jack. Exactly. To so, uh, so I was like, listen, to Sean Jackson, and he's like, I can't do that. It's, it's a bad trade. I'm like, it's the only way I'm doing it. Um, I ended up, uh, I said, listen, send me the trade if you want to do it, or I'm going to bed. Send me the trade. Um, Threaten him with going to bed. I That's did. a nice move. I laughed when the trade was sent to me. I hit accept, and that was that. Especially savvy move, since I'm sure that De Silva spends most nights alone with his own thoughts. Exactly. And it would have really been tough for him to, to live with himself if he let that pass him nah, by. He had, to, he had to make a trade. That was like that or nothing. So, mm. um, again, I'm, I'm a little nervous because I don't like making trades in that fashion where it's the same positions in a trade because one of us is going to look dumb, uh, me or him. Uh, I traded, well, my three guys were actually higher drafted than his three guys. Yeah. After uh, two weeks pulling that kind of trade, that's risky on my part. But, um, you know, I was one and one. I scored 55 points the week before, um, and I sent my message to my team, and that was my message. Um, Todd Gurley was my centerpiece of my team, and Absolutely. I kicked him out. And now, I, I do want to, you know, look, it, it was a great week for you, so it's really hard to start splitting hairs about this trade. I understand that. But just to play devil's advocate, um, you know, I, I think that potentially De Silva... Uh, back attack may have walked away with the better end of this deal. And, and and I will tell you why, because number one, if you would have kept the guys that you had had, your score would have been higher than it was. Yes. This so it so the guys you traded away outscored the guys that you got. Mm -hmm. And you would have won regardless. Yeah. Um, but the, the other thing is uh, knowing now that De Silva was able to flip Isaiah Crowell for Emmanuel Sanders. That was a good trade. So essentially he traded, essentially what he got out of the deal was Emmanuel Sanders... Uh, Deshaun Jackson and Todd Gurley, whereas you got Stefan Diggs, uh, who obviously his stock has risen since mm -hmm. they're, they're going to go to a, a pass-first offense, uh, David Johnson, and basically a, a, a throwaway guy in yeah. J.H.I. So, you know, look, great week for you, um, more power to you. Also, for you being able, and look, we joke around with De Silva, but you know what, to be able to, to be diligent enough to get everything lined up right where a trade like that was pulled off, I commend both of you guys because trades like that, Really just make the whole league better, more compelling. Um, and look, in the end, no matter how you slice it, you could justify it on both sides. And I think the Silva now, with that receiving trio, he's got a great team. He's got Terrell Williams on his bench in yeah. San Diego. So, I mean, he's got trade bait down the road and could really fortify his team to um, play off caliber. Absolutely. Yeah, he's got trade bait and he prefers jail bait. Yes. That's <laughs> De Silva in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, so... 
we're going to get now into our Corman call out for this week. And so I, I don't want to spend too much time belaboring this. I want to give Boomer his, his platform to say what he needs to say about me in response. He did beat me. Good for him. But there were some shenanigans that I tried to pull against him, actually successfully pulled against him. And it's the only reason why this game was even close. And the story went like this. I went up to watch the 1 o'clock games with Boomer, who lives way up in North Jersey, a town named Wanakee, which is about an hour and 20 minutes from where I live. So I drive up there, and I, when I get there, it's 20 minutes to 1. And I check, before I get out of my car, I check the lineups, or our matchup for the game, and I see that Delaney Walker is now out. His starting wide receiver is now out. Now my starting, uh, I'm sorry, his starting tight end, Delaney Walker, was out. Now... My starting tight end, Rob Gronkowski, dropped a goose egg, but I had to put him in. I knew it was a risk I had to take, but he dropped a goose egg, so I needed to level the playing field if I had a chance to win. So with 20 minutes left until the 1 o'clock games and seeing Delaney Walker in his lineup, I knew that I had to stall for 20 minutes. What did you do? So I went in there, and while we were hanging out in his garage, um, I made up this whole story about a guy, Tim, that we used to know. It's a guy that we haven't seen in years, so I knew I'd be safe telling a story about it. But I stretched out this story for about 20 minutes, this story with all these ups and downs about how there was a guy broken down on the side of the road. So Tim pulled over to help him out and was talking to the guy, and he reached for something on his floor, and Tim got freaked out and reached in and grabbed the guy's hand and wrestled his arm and then saw it was really nothing. And then a cop came because there were two cars pulled on the side of the road. So. The guy who Tim was trying to help wanted to press assault charges because he broke the guy's thumb when he grabbed his hand. And I got this whole thing where I was like, oh, man, have you ever helped somebody out? And then it came back to bite you? Like, I was really just stretching this as far as I could take it. <laughs> and next thing you know, the 1 o'clock game to start, and the first pass, cost, ca first pass caught by a Titan is by Jay Samaro, awesome. who's in for Delaney <laughs> Walker. And he just looks at me, and it was like he knew. <laughs> He's like, guy. he's like, you know when you've known a friend for long enough that you just know when they're being a snake in the grass? And Boomer knew, because he looked at me. He goes, nice dick. <laughs> Classic Tim. <laughs> <laughs> but in the end, I ended up losing anyway. I that, that is one of the dirtiest tricks I've ever pulled in That's fantasy. That's get for doing that. Right, and you know, I, I had to tell somebody early on, so I confided in, in my, my brother. And he said to be careful because the fantasy gods might smite thee. And it appears they did. Mm -hmm. Great and who would have known that Eddie Royal wasn't going to get me enough points? Um, but anyway, uh, so Boomer now has um, his rebuttal to my uh, Corman call out of him last week. And here you go. Today, I'm going to call out Mr. Eichel's in the Fantasy Corman League. Why am I doing this? Because I won. I beat him. That being said, I'm not too happy with him calling me out and the stories he told about my personal life. But instead of spending an hour explaining my story, I'm only going to take one minute. First off, this was a personal story, and he got it all wrong. She was pretty attractive, she was very drunk, and we were crushing guts. But that being said, when we were done, she went to the bathroom. She was naked. On her way back, she followed the wall right into my parents' bedroom. To Anthony's question, there was no screaming. My dad woke up, my mom woke up, I woke up. I ran in there, I grabbed her, took her back into the bed, that was it. That's the story. The next morning, I got a ribbon from my mom. My dad didn't say much. He, he kind of played it off like, ha, ha, ha. You know, he was pretty happy. Now, I could tell stories about Kevin. But being that I was really upset with him, I'm not going to embarrass him in this league. That's not how I do things. I'm pretty generous, and I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to embarrass him. Now, that being said, I will tell you a story that Kevin told me today. And the story goes, I played him in football, fantasy football. I won. Story over. 
Very well said, Boomer. Um, you know, I have my own call out to make this week. Um, I'd like to call out uh, Kickers Lives Matter, Mr. Bobby Quinn. Bobby, you look like a man who eats most of his meals at Delilah's Den. The only thing creepier than your rape van you drive are those daily good gifs you post. You are 3 0. Congrats to you. But you have the worst team in this league. Your starting running backs are now backups in uh, Spencer Ware and D'Angelo Williams. Uh, you did make a trade for Crowell, who was on my bench and De Silva's bench, so great job. Um, you play uh, Boomer this week, and I predict Boomer beats you by 10 points, which is probably the first time that sentence was ever said in the history of this planet. <laughs> Um, after Boomer, you play uh, High and Andreas Green, and then you Knuckles. Um, you're gonna lose those games too. Um, you're three and zero, but I'm calling you out, and I'm uh, challenging you to a water bet. I predict you will make the playoffs this year. So I'm awaiting your response, and um, good luck this week. You're gonna need it. And our first public water bet made here on the Corman Fantasy Cast, Bobby. You've been called out, buddy. You've been called out. Now, with that being said, this show would not be complete if we didn't get to our good gif of the week. It's go time, boys. So here we go. As usual, every week, we pick the cream of the crop from the good gifs that we all post on the message board. I mean, it has really been getting kind of out of hand at this point, but in a good way. Um, so our nominees for this week are Trump building a wall. My Knuckles. Dick in a Cup by Old Dirty BJ. And <laughs> who can forget the tandem suicides? <laughs> Old Dirty BJ. Bombo Berry. And the winner is... Taking a Cup by Old Dirty BJ. Really, I mean, you want to talk about some of the ultimate gotchas on the message board. I didn't even zoom in until two days after it was posted, so I was really blindsided by it. I thought it was spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> In a way, it was. <laughs> you know, and you know it's a good gajif when it's the only one this past week that I actually saved to my phone and sent to other yeah, people. Yeah, me too. So, well done by Old Dirty BJ. Guys, keep the gajifs coming. Um, we're going to be right back with our week four preview. Welcome back. Let's run through our week four slate. First match, Save by Lev Bell versus Dak Attack. This is our interleague rivalry match of the week, and there is a lot of bad blood here. Next, we got the Teabaggers versus How Did I Win Last Year? Yes, uh, me and my brother Chris, uh, five championships combined, um, but he is hurting Moncrief out, Foster out, Rawls out, Jordy and Nelson, uh, and Aaron Rodgers have a bye. So, good luck. Hmm. Next, Dolomite Pimp Squad versus Old Dirty BJ. Dolomite Pimp Squad, the outright number one team in the Corman right now, looks to keep his undefeated streak going against an old foe and friend. Next, hashtag Kickers Lives Matter versus B for Boomer. Someone has got to win this game. Um... Kickers 3-0. and uh, I predicted you to lose this week. I'm sticking with that prediction. All right. Next, Bombo Berry versus Mohawk Maniacs. We get to see once again just how low Wayne can go. Next, we have Beers versus High on AJ's Green. Yeah, that's a good matchup. Um, High on AJ's Green, I like his team. I think he can uh, you know, start getting his uh, group together and make a run for the playoffs. Lastly, Knuckles versus Adrian Peterson. Uh, your big matchup this week. By far the least interesting game of the entire slate, which is why it's on the bottom. But I sure as hell care. Looking to get back to 500, 2-2. Two and two. And Gronk is back this week, for reals! Lot more people. 
<laughs> now, we want to thank you guys once again for joining us. Keep those good gifs coming in. We are signing off from Sweaty Garage Studios in beautiful Hamilton, New Jersey. Until next time, Ave Atque Vale. So what people don't know is um, that trade. <laughs> I just drenched the table. I just drenched the whole table. You're in the splash zone, Bri. And I'm Shamu. I fucked the whole thing up. I'm sorry. No, Brian, this is fault. <laughs> get me, get me back in the <laughs> <laughs> Left arm on the table. <clears throat> right hand out of sight. Come on, Mike. Let's go. That's, put your arm more in so I can see your hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just go. So, um, many people don't know the way that trade started was the night before. It included... <laughs> Stop laughing, both of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, the trade uh, actually included Amari Cooper at first. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just do this whole segment? <laughs> We're losing a lot of time here. Guys. Seriously. <laughs>